Welcome back to the next section of traffic training. In this section, we're going to talk about configuring your provider. So we're going to walk through the configuration of the Docker provider and also understand some of the best practices around security and also how the networking works between a service and traffic. Let's take a look at the provider itself and some of the use cases. So when we configure the provider, in our case, we're configuring the Docker provider. We, the defaults that are provided by the provider is a relatively good start. Uh, just by enabling the provider, you already have many of the defaults in place. For example, you know, setting it up to watch the events, uh, the refresh interval, and this is a good place to start when you're getting going. Now, what I recommend is to start small and increment these settings. So don't add a bunch of settings at once. I would really add one or two at a time and really evaluate if this is meeting your needs or not. And this allows you to also see how the changes impact your environment. Um, I've also tried the other way. I've tried to like put all the provider details in there all at once. And then you don't know which one was actually making the change or not. So just do it incrementally and it helps a lot more. Now, how does the networking work within the provider? Now, if the container exposes a port, and usually they expose one port. So for example, Apache or Nginx always exposes port 80, and most applications pu publish at least one port. Traffic uses this port as the internal communication. So when the, the container starts, traffic then notif notices that this container starts and routes internal communication from traffic to this container. So internal traffic is en routed. Now there are cases when a container exposes multiple ports or no ports at all. And in this case, we'd actually define a label in the service itself, defining exactly which port that should be used. So that's how the networking works between the container and traffic. And we can define that as well in the provider. Now, if we look back at our static config for the Docker provider, I'm using the file config in YAML format as it's a bit easier to read and it's a bit easier to present. So in this case, it is the Docker provider file format and you can see it is API, the dashboard is enabled true and we've seen this file before. Providers Docker, watch is true. Now the biggest thing is exposed by default. I have that set to false because we don't want every container that starts to automatically publish publicly. So I always take this option as false then you can determine per service which one should be exposed and which one shouldn't. Because in many cases, you'll have like a database or you'll have some services that you don't want traffic to route. And this should be internal only. So that's why we expose it by default to false. And this allows you a little bit more granular control at the service level. Swarm mode, we enable that to true and then it watches swarm for any events that happen. Additionally, traffic logging, you can see log levels info. Uh, again, this is just the standard config we've seen before, but again, it's where I would start with the configuration of Docker. Now we can extend this to also include TLS. So actually certificates on traffic that are matching the Docker. So we then have encryption between traffic and Docker. That is best practice. I do recommend doing that. And let's look at some of the provider security considerations. So. Again, we would recommend TLS between traffic and the orchestrator. Whether, whatever the orchestrator is, I really recommend that you have an encryption uh, between the two components. Additionally, limit the Docker API access. So Docker is extremely powerful, it's your orchestrator, and you don't wanna be publishing this publicly because if it's public, then people actually have the ability to control your cluster. So we wanna limit that as much as possible. Use best practices for securing Docker. I mean, I can't iterate this enough. So even after you deploy traffic, run some of the security tools to make sure that you're, you're hardened and you have best practices involved. And to do that, I really recommend reviewing the Docker API access documentation, as you see here. It's part of the Docker API access, and I have it open here. You can see it's docs.traffic.io and it's under providers, configuration discovery, Docker, and it is the Docker API access. And you can see in here that they really take some time. So traffic spends some time really saying, okay, this is a concern on how traffic uses the Docker daemon and we should do our best to protect this daemon as much as possible. So what that means, 
you know, the var run Docker sock, that's where traffic is mounting. And there's a bunch of useful resources here to actually see how, how uh, traffic is using this component to actually expose the container. It also goes through, you know, how to actually secure this even further and best practices for, you know, enabling this into your container. It is best practice. I would really recommend reviewing some of these links because, you know, this is your core infrastructure and traffic will have access to your entire containers. So really take some time and, and make sure it's secure. That's all I can iterate here. And additionally, you can run like Docker Bench. And what that does is Docker Bench then tests to make sure that everything is indeed uh, up to security standards. And the links are all in this section's notes. So please have a look at the links. Um, again, we understand how traffic is and the provider. So in the next section, we're gonna discuss how the entry points are then added into the configuration file. And finally, we're gonna start it up and see how all this comes together. All right, join me in the next section in entry points.